It's me again, Teacher May. And today, we will learn about the changes in matter. In this lesson, we will go further about the changes in matter. What changes are formed in both physical and chemical? Are you ready to learn, children? That's great! Let's begin! We already know that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Everything goes through change. The components that make up matter are in constant motion, which explains why change occurs in matter. The motion and interaction of the components of matter can manifest in two ways, a change in state or a chemical reaction. When matter changes its state, it undergoes a physical change. When it goes through a chemical reaction, it undergoes chemical change. Moving on, physical change is the change in matter where its appearance, form, shape, or size may be altered but its composition stays the same or it does not change into a new substance. A substance that undergoes physical change is still the same substance after the change. Examples When you mold a piece of clay into something else, you change its shape. But do you change the clay's composition? When you get a haircut, does your hair change into a different type? When water turns into ice, is it no longer water? In these examples, the clay your hair and the water all go through physical changes. Thus, they are still the same substances despite the physical changes that they went through. Matter can change or transform from one state to another. A change in state is an example of physical change. The perfect example of changing states is the water cycle. First, Water in liquid form is found in bodies of water. Then the heat of the sun allows it to evaporate, turning it into water vapor, which is gas. When precipitation happens, water falls back to the earth either as liquid or rain, or solid as hail, snow, or sleet. Matter can change or transform from one state to another through melting, evaporation, condensation, solidification, and sublimation. Different solids have different melting point. When we say melting point, it is the temperature at which solids turns into liquids. Example, when ice is placed under the sun, it will absorb radiant energy and start to become liquid. The process by which solids change to liquids due to the addition or absorption of heat is called melting. Evaporation is the process by which a phase of matter changes from liquid to gas or vapor. This takes place of temperatures below the boiling point. When you say boiling point, it is the temperature at which the liquid turns into gas. Different liquids have different boiling points. Example, if you have heated water in an uncovered pan, you may have noticed that the water spills out of the pan when it reaches its boiling point at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. If you do not turn off the heat, the water will start to evaporate and turn into gas. The rise in temperature causes the rate of evaporation to increase. Evaporation is also observed when wet clothes are dried under the sun. Condensation is the process when a liquid formed from gas or vapor. Water vapor condenses when moist air is cooled below its dew point, or the temperature at which moist air 
becomes saturated and forms dew when it comes in contact with the ground. Dew is a deposit of moisture on an exposed surface. Clouds, fog, and mist are produced by condensation. When heat is removed from a gaseous substance, the molecules of the substance combine to become liquid. An example of this is the water vapor or gas in the air that becomes rain or liquid. Solidification or freezing is the process by which the state of matter changes from liquid to solid. Example, when you put water into an ice tray and put it inside the freezer, the water in the liquid state becomes ice in solid state. Freezing point is the temperature at which liquids solidify. Different liquids have different freezing point. Sublimation is the change of state in matter from solid to gas without passing the liquid state. Example is moth balls are the small and marble like balls inside cabinets. These moth balls slowly release the chemical through sublimation. After some time, the moth balls become smaller before completely disappearing. The smell from the moth balls indicates their transformation into a gas state. The longer the moth balls are exposed, the more they turn into gas. That is all about physical change. Now, let's proceed to chemical change. Chemical change is a change that transforms a substance into another and the transformation usually cannot be reversed. It happens when there is a chemical reaction, like for example, when paper is burned, the reaction between paper and fire produces the new substance, ash, which can no longer be turned back into paper. Another example of chemical change takes place when you use hydrogen peroxide on a wound. The chemical comes in contact with enzymes from the bacteria in the wound or from the wound's damaged tissues. An enzyme is a substance that hastens a chemical reaction. Because of chemical reaction of enzymes with the bacteria or damaged tissues, hydrogen peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen. Among the reactions that promote chemical change are combustion, electrolysis, oxidation, and tarnishing. Combustion is the chemical reaction that occurs when oxygen gas reacts with a flammable substance to create heat and light. The reaction most happens between fuel and oxygen. Fuel is any flammable substance that stores energy in the form of heat or light. Examples are gas, oil, and coal. The energy of a fuel is released only when the fuel reacts with oxygen. For example, the gasoline used as fuel for cars burns with oxygen and releases energy. The energy that is released powers the engines of vehicles. Next is electrolysis or the process of using electricity to break a compound into simpler elements or substance. It is the reaction involved in the mechanism of cars that use hydrogen as their source of power. In such a car, the tanks fill with water. Water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. The electric current from the car's engine applies water to separate hydrogen and oxygen. A fuel cell converts the hydrogen into electricity that is powerful enough to run a car. Fuel cell is a battery in which fuels are stored and consumed as energy. Another reaction that promotes chemical change is the oxidation. It is the reaction that occurs when an inflammable substance is exposed to oxygen 
and this results in a change in the chemical properties of the substance. When iron is exposed to moisture and oxygen, for example, the iron element interacts with oxygen. Oxygen and iron combines forming a compound called iron oxide, or a reddish substance that is commonly called rust. Lastly, we have tarnishing. When a bright metal is exposed to a non-metal, usually oxygen, sulfur dioxide, or hydrogen sulfide, it produces a dark color. This chemical reaction is called tarnishing. Unlike rusting, tarnishing affects only the top layer of an object. When silver tarnishes because of the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen sulfide, it forms a black film over the shiny surface of the silver object. These are all about chemical reaction. And this will end our lesson for today about changes in matter. I hope you learned something and keep on studying. Have a good day!